Hi everyone, this is Ali, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the gradient mesh tool in Adobe Illustrator. For this tutorial, you should already have an understanding of the pen tool, anchor points, the direct selection tool, and the eyedropper tool. As a reminder, a gradient is a graduated blend of two or more colors or tints of the same color. The gradient mesh tool allows for flexible and detailed application of color to objects. It creates a grid inside an object that follows a contour. Color can then be applied to grid points and different colors between grid points that feather into each other. This creates a realistic effect that is much faster and more accurate than digital painting that you might do freehand with a brush. So this is an example of a simple use of the gradient mesh tool. There's only about three vertical and horizontal lines. Where those lines intersect is a grid point and those are going to be used to apply color. Um, you can also use the gradient mesh tool in a very elaborate way, like this portrait of Scarlett Johansson has many, many lines and grid points, so it allows for a lot of detail. In Illustrator, the gradient mesh tool is here on the left. The button looks sort of like a warped spider web, and the keyboard shortcut is the letter U, and that's both on Mac and Windows. So I have um, brought an apple into Illustrator and I've used the pen tool to go around and create um, a shape that mimics the exterior of the apple. So it does not have a fill or a stroke, so you can't see it, but I'm gonna drag it over and there it is highlighted and I'm ready to apply the gradient mesh tool. So I go to object, I scroll down to create gradient mesh and it allows me to pick the amount of rows and columns and I have 20 which is a lot. Uh, the sphere that we saw earlier had a lot less just like this so it allows for less detail but I want a lot of detail in the apple so I have many many grid points there. This is one way to apply uh, the grid points. You can also apply them manually. Um, that's really good for an oddly shaped item but for this uh, sort of spherical item, uh, the method I just showed works really well. The way that you manually apply extra grid points is by clicking the gradient mesh tool and then going either to the, the side of the object like so and clicking or going to the top to add more columns. So I just added a few more rows and now I'm going to add more columns. I just have to zoom in like this. Okay, there's one, two, three, and the more grid points you have, the more detail you can have. So I can have more detail, especially around where the stem connects to the apple, that would be good. So now we're ready to apply color. And the way we do that is with our eyedropper tool and by selecting the, uh, the grid points on the area where we want to apply the color. So you could do that by manually selecting each individual grid point, but since there's so many, I'm going to select many at once with the lasso tool. So I'm going to uh, select this whole lower area and then go to my reference apple, use the eyedropper tool, and click around until I get the color that I want. And then I go back here with the lasso tool and I keep trying to copy the color. So it helps to use the keyboard shortcuts. The lasso tool is Q, and then the eyedropper tool is I. So you switch back and forth until you've completed the whole apple. It takes a while, so here is a finished apple. Um, as you can see, it's not a perfect example. I feel like I didn't do the best job copying the color and the lighting and shading. It is a really good exercise in paying attention to the details when it comes to those factors. Um, but hopefully you can see how the tool works and how the colors sort of feather into each other. Another consideration is that each grid point acts just like how they do with the pen tool. So you can click the direct selection tool and actually move the location of each grid point, or you could pull out the, a handle like so and change the appearance. So it's very customizable and I've basically just scratched the surface of a very complex tool. I hope that I helped people see what the tool can do.